and I've taken action to ensure that those who advise ministers should never overlook the primacy of Parliament. This is the chief forum of the nation, today, tomorrow, and I hope forever. Yeah. Now, question time offers a prime opportunity to hold ministers to account. And I share the disappointment at the slow progress that is being made. Too many backbench members are being deprived of their chance to question ministers by the long-windedness of colleagues. We are not moving down the order paper as we should. But there is also an issue of quality as well as quantity. And there is from time to time a risk that engagement with the real issues is seen to be overshadowed by political point scoring simply for its own sake. Now, Parliament's other prime function is the scrutiny of government legislation. And there is, I believe, throughout the House a general recognition that this is an area ripe for improvement. <coughs> Committees of the House, as well as outside bodies, are making a substantial contribution to the debate. And the issues are serious and they're complex and there's no simple solution. The debate should not be conducted, however, on party lines, nor on the simplistic basis of the executive versus the rest of us. The objective, to my mind, must be improved scrutiny, leading to better legislation, perhaps even by greater use of pre-legislative arrangements. I think they might be very useful to us. And again, it is as much a matter of quality of scrutiny as of quantity. I think furthermore, the House must be prepared to put in the hours necessary to carry out effective examination of the government's legislative work. And now, if this means long days or rearrangements of the parliamentary year, so be it. Of course, I'm the, I've been here long enough, I'm the, I recognise the importance of enabling parliamentarians to enjoy a domestic life, and it shouldn't be impossible to meet both objectives, but where there may, may be a clash, the requirements of effective scrutiny and the democratic process must take priority over the convenience of yeah. yeah. Those of you who were here when I submitted myself to the will of the House in 1992 will recall that I said in all honesty that for me, the Commons has never just been a career. It is my life. And now after eight and a half years as Speaker, that is more than ever true. Quite apart from the honour of being Speaker and all the many fascinations of the work, I have enjoyed every minute of it. Yeah. I've enjoyed the job. I was about to say I was enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> I enjoyed almost every minute of it. <laughs> and it has been helped by presiding over a house with so many characters in it with so many stalwart members on whom this house depends so much. I haven't had a boring day in my working life, and for all that, I am grateful to all of you. <laughs> you know, when I came to the conclusion that it was right for me to go, my thoughts went to that famous passage in the Book of Ecclesiastes about there being a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. Well, my dancing days are long. <laughs> and I shan't weep, I can promise you that, but I shall certainly mourn the fact that an all-important phase in my life has come to a natural end. But I believe it's time for laughter too, as we remember we remember together all the lighter moments that we have enjoyed. <laughs> There's an old sourpuss over there. <laughs> and so I say to you, um, rejoice. Rejoice in your inheritance and defend your rights. And remember always that the privileges this house enjoys were dearly won and must never be squandered. Yeah. No, you elected me in the springtime, 
and I shall retire in the autumn. I think it is a very fitting seasonal conclusion to my period office. And therefore I say to all of you, in a phrase you know so well but has never been more true, time's up. <laughs> <laughs> And that is it for today. Coverage continues on News 24 and Dispatch Box tonight at midnight on BBC Two.